I'm going to super quickly teach you how to make your first add-on. You're going to notice in the bottom left of my screen here, it doesn't let me select any add-ons. And that's because right before this video, I went and I actually duplicated my add-ons folder. So that way I could delete everything in the add-ons folder. So that way I could show you me making an add-on completely from scratch. And there's only three things you need to make a minimum viable add-on. That is a folder that has the name your add-on would have. So we can see bartender four, and then you need to have a TOC file and a Lua file that have the same name as that folder. So we're going to go in here and control click these two files, one Lua, one TOC. That way we can then copy paste them into our add-ons folder here. Okay. Now what do we need? Well, we need an actual folder for our new add-on to be in. Let's name it new add-on. Okay, cool. And then let's copy that name and we'll put that same name now on each of these files. Great, now you need to know what to put in the files and what the purpose of them is. The Lua file is the code that you're running. The programming language is called Lua. TOC means table of contents. It describes information about the uh, program that you have basically. But for the minimum viable add-on, all you need to do is list the Lua files that are gonna be used by the add-on. And so in this case, new add-on.lua is the only thing you need in the TOC file. Now you may have noticed that before there was a whole bunch of stuff at the top that had um, hashtags like this. And basically all that stuff is versioning in post. That way you can take credit. You can be like author and put me, I am cool. Or you could put in um, another one that's useful is the interface number, which this value changes as, uh, uh, what's called as Blizzard updates the client. And so this is how stuff will like know, um, that an add-on's out today. Because if you have, for example, this is your interface number, but the client says that the interface number is this, then the client knows that your add-on has not received an update since the client received an update. But yeah, that's a neither here or there. This is all you technically need. And then you actually go into the Lua folder or file itself, and we're going to delete everything in here. So that way I can show you me making an add-on really fast. And so we're gonna do a hello world type thing except instead of saying hello world we're gonna say meme because i'm 11 years old awesome got that saved and now what will happen is nothing because look we didn't put the text files in the right spot so nothing happened nothing got printed and it didn't even let us select an add-on there let's uh go in again and then i'll put this into here wonderful go back to wow log out so now it's going to refresh and check the add-on folder you see new add-on is in it should print out meme let's see yeah meme if it prints out meme then i'm a good boy and i didn't lie to you and you now know how to make a minimum viable add-on cool it said meme interesting let me prove it to you some more you can actually modify this stuff at runtime that's the reason they use lua anyways is so that way they don't have to reload the program to get this functionality and uh, lots of other things too. I'm definitely oversimplifying their engineering decision. Look, it said meme one. Great. Now it's probably leaves one more question in your head. Hey man, all you really showed me how to do is how to literally make an add on that prints out a sentence. That's not very useful. Yeah, that is what I did. Um, but now I'm going to show you how to do something that is a little more useful. We're going to go to chat GPT because it will answer basically any question you have about programming, which I tested right before showing the say making this video. Let's see. Do you know about wow add on programming? for classic era. Now it's going to type me up an essay saying, yes, I do, I'm super familiar, and it's gonna tell me random factoids about it. Then I'm going to ask it to pretty please write an add-on for me that does something kind of complex to me. And it will pull it off successfully, and I'll show you in the game. And what I want you to get out of this is that through simply using ChatGPT and reading other people's add-on code, it is really, really easy to slowly learn how to implement the exact behavior you want with add-ons. Everybody, I feel like, has had like, the, the dream of having their custom UI with really fancy things, and that's actually kind of a stupid dream because it's a ton of work to do anything with UI. You're going to have images and crap that you're going to have to figure out too, but it's totally possible. So let's see. Write me an add-on named new add-on. I want it's to save the names of players who have whispered me before comma and the number of times they have whispered me save these values in the stored variables folder so we can update how many messages i received across all login sessions. 
man, that is an absolute mouthful, but um, it's gonna, it is going to spit this out for me. <laughs> so let's get our little fancy stuff up so that way once it tells us hey please do it this way we can then put that in right away and it's also going to tell us that there are some changes we should do with the toc file we can talk a little bit about that you see these are the ego things you can put in author you can put in save variables this is not an ego thing you actually need to have this it defines where um the data is going to be stored at but these other ones like titles notes author interface is kind of useful interface is what the client's update version is so like that's how the client knows your add-ons not up to date it's because the interface number isn't up to date which means the client was updated and whoever's developing the add-on hasn't created a new version with the up-to-date interface number now we just simply take this lua code and we control c it and then we're going to put this into the this file and like I mentioned before, there is one line out of here of mandatory TOC stuff. So we'll make sure to get that in as well. Wonderful. Got both of those and make sure these are closed. In the game, we're going to reload. The add-ons already enabled, so this will be fine. It should have updated it. Notice how it didn't print anything. So that's another good sign. Um, I could ask somebody to message me, but um, you can actually whisper yourself for some reason. Hey, you are an idiot. Let's say that. Awesome. Got a little message there. Let's log out. The logging out is important because I think that the event handler they're going to use to actually store this is going to wait for a logout event, but um, I can't dig into that right now. Let's see. Going to now check that we actually did store this data in saved variables. So you'd go to the WTF folder and then you'd go to account and then you'd go to the account that you log into and then you'd go to save variables. Now let's see, it should be in here. New add on DB. Ooh, it actually didn't store it. All right, let's check that quickly in here. He has whispered you. It didn't store it. <laughs> I'm going to just tell it that. And then it'll actually probably just rewrite it. Yeah, I bet this is it. Ensure it's uh, set up correctly for persistence. I bet this is the problem. But um, even though that was not what I was expecting, I guess this is probably exactly what you need to see, even if it's not what you want to see. So go back into the Lua here. There we go. Copy this crap. I don't know what it's saying to me. I don't care. You try to read everything ChatGPT tells you, it's going to be a lot harder to use it. Awesome. Reload this stuff again. Get in the game. Message myself. Read. Okay, let's see. Does that work again? Two times? Okay, that's cool. So it seems like it's working. I didn't even think of telling it to actually um, log the info like that. As I mean, you can see I didn't ask it, but it, it knows to. Let's see. Jake from tree, ah, three times. Awesome, so literally unplanned on here in OBS, I was able to show you in nine minutes making an add-on that's like kind of fancy. And yeah, I do do these things like all live, so you can do this yourself. Like you see, this is my OBS, the, the way I did the zooms and crap earlier. Like, I can do that live. Yeah, you see this? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm fancy like that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about how to write add-ons, you can look at my channel page and join the Discord and, like, ping me and ask a question. And I will give you a good answer, but it might not necessarily be the answer that unblocks you. If you're not a programmer, you can still do this add-on crap. It won't be a huge task to learn how to do it, as long as you're not trying to do anything, like, super-duper fancy. <laughs>